Hi everyone, my name is Michael. Thank you again for attending our recruitment tips workshop. We're super excited to have you and we really appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, to kind of share various tips around recruitment and engaging in a digital setting. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to my colleagues so they can introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Pham. I'm an advisor at Seoul and I use she, her, hers. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, Orlando Luna, an advisor within Seoul. Awesome, and again, my name is Michael. I'm also an advisor, my pronouns are he, him, his. This is just a little bit of info about our office in case folks aren't familiar. Um, we understand that there's probably some transition happening within your orgs due to registration and or re-registration. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, we support the 1300 organizations on campus. And we also provide registration services our organization and leadership development, as well as fundraising proposal consultation, fundraising approval and guidelines, and policy overview. Now, just to get a sense of who's in the room, if folks feel comfortable sharing what organization you're from, or organizations, and your role or position within that organization. So if folks can chat, uh, utilize the chat feature to share what organization you're coming from or organizations, as well as your position or role. And while people are doing that, um, as Michael was saying, just wanted to put out there as a reminder that we are currently in the registration period. So a uh, reminder for folks, if you're a returning organization, don't forget to submit your re-reg. I know there are a couple of folks joining us today who are actually planning to register. Um, and so just a reminder for that. You can find that information on our website. Awesome. Cool. So it's always nice to see the wide array of folks that are in our workshops. And again, super awesome to see the different levels of involvement and different types of organizations that are present. Cool, feel free to continue um, sharing what organization you're from and what positions you hold within your organization. We're gonna go ahead and continue to the overview. So this is a gist of what we're gonna be going over today. We've broken it up into the following sections, marketing and recruitment, uh, we'll go over social media, collaboration and accessibility within those arenas. Engagement, uh, we'll review different event types. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about retention and best practices when engaging in recruitment. So important things to be mindful of. Um, we also uh, collected some questions that folks submitted during their RSVP. So we'll share some of those and most likely they may be answered during the presentation, but we'll definitely readdress them. And if they didn't get answered, we'll use that time to do that. And then we'll also share submitted strategies that groups currently are using for their recruitment efforts that have been successful. Um, and then we'll also provide any opportunity for additional questions, as I mentioned. So that's what you can expect for us to go over. So for marketing and branding, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Ashley so she can discuss some of the tips for marketing. Great. So um, for fall quarter, you all know that the university is currently remote. There are quite a few um, still on campus residents. And so there is an opportunity to advertise to those on campus residents through Res Life. Um, I think that they can still put up um, some flyers, email the residents, um, as well as some digital displays on, on the Hill. So there's gonna still be a very limited um, marketing with Res Life. Um, I think you can find that information on their website. And if you can, um, check in with your advisor because they have more details about the Res Life opportunity. There are still a good amount of students uh, living on the Hill. So that's, there's still an opportunity there. Typically, you know, um, there would be more advertising opportunities such as the dining halls, things like that. But with us being remote, the, the options are available but limited. Um, another thing that I want to point out to you all is that when you go to the My UCLA website, um, especially when you're going on, and here's a plug again about re-registering your org, um, you're going to go to My UCLA to see your classes, you're re-registering your org. Um, what you should do there while you're also in the re-registration process is updating the information that you have about your organization in My UCLA. So your description. Um, I did see one of my groups re-register and they, they put in their description um, how they're currently functioning. So how often are they meeting remotely, if they're meeting remotely, 
um, and in what ways are connecting with virtually because especially with new and incoming students they're going to be utilizing the sole website and reading those potential descriptions um, and so you want to make sure that they're up up to date and accurate and also giving some information on how are you currently functioning and I think sometimes the description might say things um, related to in person and so that's something you'll want to consider a new feature also in your my.ucla profile now is that um, not only can you put your org email your website but you also now your social media um, pages and, and, and handles. So again, I would encourage you to go in and update your my.ucla org profile. Um, and that then leads me into talking about a new feature to UCLA, which is called the community calendar. So I'm going to ask that Michael uh, shares us what it looks like. Um, you might have seen this when you start on the my UCLA page because it shows up there. Um, but this is a new feature so that um, departments, registered organizations can put up your events. So if you have virtual events or recruitment events or open houses, you can submit your event on here and someone will see all the different types of events and opportunities that are currently happening at UCLA. Um, obviously, all of them are probably going to be digital, Zoom, or remote events, but it's in a way for everyone involved in the UCLA community to find out different things that are going on. So you can see right actually now our recruitment tips workshop is featured on this website. So it will give event details, the time, the description of the event, and you can either put the website link, your website. Um, but how this ties in with your my.ucla profile is that if they click into your event, it's going to have more information about your organization. Um, at the top, Michael, if you can scroll to the top of this page, discover organizations. You see how it's right there on the website? So when they click that and they look into the category, these are categories that you've self-selected, um, groups are gonna show up um, on this website here. So information about your organization will be here as well as your social media handles, your description. So if they happen to find an event that you've put on here and want to know more information about your org, that profile is all linked. So that's why it's going to be important for you to update your my.ucla information. And then how you add an event, Michael, if you could scroll to the bottom of this web page. In order to add an event, you'll see bottom right hand corner, student organizations, signatories and managers may. And so that's where you'll edit your profile as well as submit for the online events. And when you submit your events through this um, website feature, uh, your organizer is gonna see those events and then maybe follow, uh, your advisor, sorry. Your advisor will see those events and then review it, maybe follow up with you, or then once they approve, it will be published to the, this website. So this is an opportunity for you to market your organization and the events that you're um, hosting um, during this academic year. Next, another thing that I want to promote is, um, oh, is um, UCLA departments. So depending on, you know, the focus of your organization, maybe in the past you've used a couple of, you know, typical recruitment strategies, whether it's, um, maybe it is you did market to UCLA departments or you did brew and walk or you did, you know, flyering and things like that. Um, right now, we do encourage that you reach out to any UCLA departments that you think might have shared vision, values, or maybe the same target audience, whether it's a potential student affairs department, um, whether it's an academic department. Um, a lot of departments are going to be utilizing their social media now, their newsletter, their email list. Um, in the past, they might have had bulletin boards as well, but um, I think now, just like you all, they're going to be focusing on um, their newsletters, their email lists, and their social media pages. So we would highly suggest that you collaborate with them, especially if you think that there are shared um, opportunities there. For us um, at, at um, Seoul, you know, in the newsletter, we do feature groups, we do um, highlight orgs, as well as our Bruin Leaders um, Instagram. So there are some opportunities with us. And then again, I would say, you know, have a conversation with your advisor about maybe ask them what what departments they think that uh, might be relevant for you all or if they have a person that they can connect you with um, in those specific departments. So those are some resources at UCLA that we suggest that you all look into. And again, if you want to get more specific, I would suggest that you reach your advisor. And we're going to be emphasizing that quite often in this presentation today. 
Cool. Thanks, Ashley. So Ashley gave good tips for explaining the like how to get yourself out there. Um, one thing I also want to draw attention to is the branding component when it comes to marketing. So, you know, we're in this setting and we want to try and create you know, as much personal connection as possible. So when you look at branding, one thing to definitely be mindful of is uh, what are you offering your members? So what can they benefit from your organization? Um, what activities can you do that might align with their interests or goals? So it's always important to be upfront in terms of what you're going to offer your audience. Um, so definitely be explicit about that. Um, and one other thing that's important about branding is that, you know, your audience can find a connection to what you're doing or whatever your organization's efforts are based on, you know, your own mission, your own goals, you know, and whatever additional messages you choose to put out there to kind of describe your organization. So it's important to create that sense of familiarity when you're doing that. Um, you know, especially when we have our new incoming first year students who are freshmen and we also have our incoming transfer students who are coming from different places. Um, I think it's really important to be mindful of how can you create a sense of familiarity for them that can kind of um, draw them closer to wanting to be a part of your organization or organizations. Um, and it also helps establish loyalty. Again, like if you can tell them this is what you're going to get out of our organization or this is what we can help you do here at UCLA, um, whether it's career related, academic related, interest related, uh, advocacy related, um, that kind of helps establish the loyalty in terms of what they can expect to get out of it and how they can um, help themselves grow by joining your organization. So those are just some tips to consider when you discuss branding. Um, they definitely go hand in hand together. But um, I'm really big on personal connection. So um, that's one thing to be mindful of. So make it as personable as possible. Um, you know, if you all feel comfortable, you know, sharing testimonies about, you know, what you've gained thus far from your organization by utilizing certain platforms that allow you to share, you know, 30 second videos or a minute video. Um, that's another way to kind of draw people in. Um, I personally like to see that, um, that firsthand account of what someone's done by being a part of that specific organization or, you know, by, you know, if we're talking about like purchasing items through online shopping right now, like what, what have you gotten from it and why do you keep going back? So those are some things that are important to consider. So always think about the person, always think about the person who's on the other end um, and how you can, you know, draw those connections even deeper. And Ashley mentioned um, smart goals. So we're going to go ahead and transition to discussing that. I'm sorry. Um, so when you're looking at, um, you know, marketing efforts or when you're looking at recruiting folks, um, you know, we believe it's definitely important to attach a goal to it and a goal that's, you know, something that is uh, doable for your organization or, you know, organization members if it's a team effort. So we're going to go through each of the tenets of SMART goals really quick um, just to kind of give you all some context in terms of, you know, recruitment efforts or just your organization operations in general. Sorry, I didn't mention it before, but what I'll say to what I'll add to is that um, this is just one potential framework, right? We, we think that it's going to be important for you, especially if you all are building your social media and your marketing and your digital brand and all that kind of stuff, that you start from, find a framework that works for your organization, right? Um, adapt them to work for what your needs are, right? Because Everyone is going to be in different places, whether you're a returning organization just starting this, like historically have been at USLA for a long time and just are now starting to get in digital space. Maybe you've really been doing that or you're a new organization looking to, you know, get built. Um, so just we are going to share with you um, SMART goals, but there's also what's called objective first framework that has to do with marketing. So we're just really encouraging you to, to we're going to go a little bit more in the SMART goals, but finding a framework um, and setting goals for your organization when it comes to um, the digital connection and the digital marketing sphere. Um, and then adjust them. But minimally, we think that maybe you should at least have goals set for the academic year. And then if you want to decide for quarter or weeks, things like that, you'll, you'll set that up for yourselves. Um, so we will start with the S. So um, S is specific. So what are you, what exactly is the goal? Um, and you want to try to make it as specific as possible. And what are you, what are you trying to do or trying to achieve? Um, so maybe, you know, you say, oh, well, I want to recruit members, right? But that's not going to be 
specific enough. So we're going to go through each of these steps to kind of help you find out like how specific do you want to go? How are you going to make it measurable? Things like that. Um, but you want to be a little bit more specific and at a certain times you might have multiple SMART goals, right, for your organization, but it's just going to be depending on what area that you're choosing to um, set the goals for. But the less ambiguous the language, the more, you know, you're going to be able to make, make, make that goal. Awesome. So I'm going to go a little bit into a little bit of detail about, you know, measurable um, when we look at SMART goals. So how are you measuring whichever goals you're setting, whether they're short-term, long-term goals, um, year-long goals? Um, you definitely want to set an indicator for how you're going to measure when you've achieved that goal or when you, you're working to, uh, towards progressing uh, to achieving that goal. So are you looking at increase in membership? Are you looking at um, attendance for a certain type of event or activity that you're hosting? Um, and it doesn't always have to be linked to specific um, actions that your organization might be doing. So um, we're talking about recruitment right now. And so you might think, oh, it's the number of people I can get to join my organization or how many people I can get, you know, share information to. But you can also look at social media too in terms of setting goals. So um, if any of you use the insights feature on Instagram, looking at like how many people you've reached or how many accounts started following you after you shared a certain post or you posted, you know, information about your org. So don't necessarily limit it to what you're actively doing, like, I guess, like physical efforts, if that makes sense. Um, look at, you know, the, look at the bigger picture. So look at social media, like I mentioned. Um, you can also look at, um, you know, specific uh, maybe feedback that folks are giving you too about your organization, especially when it comes to new members, um, gathering their input um, and looking at, you know, ways that you can implement their suggestions or their ideas into your organization um, as a way of maybe like if your goal is to include more member input, um, that's way you can track that as well. So get creative. And like Ashley said, there's tons of different frameworks, um, but at the least, you know, when you're setting goals, you should definitely be mindful of how do you know when you hit that target or how do you know when you're going in the right direction or maybe when you need to rework things. So it could be numerical, it could be, um, you know, qualitative in terms of the type of feedback you're getting. So um, look at your different options when it comes to that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and transition to uh, assignable. Okay, so this A we found um, has potential different ones. So again, adjust the, the framework to your needs. Here it says assignable. So um, who are you going to assign the, the goal to? Who can, who can make it happen? Is it a committee? Is it, you know, some person in a specific position or goal? Things like that. Um, another word, word that the A can be is, it, is it achievable? Is it attainable? Um, you'll want to, you know, give yourself an actual goal that potentially you know can happen, but isn't just too easy so that you're still challenging yourself, right? So you want to, you don't want to set such a huge goal that you're going to be disappointed if you don't reach that goal. So still make it achievable and attainable, but also give yourself a little bit of a room so that it is still challenging for you as well. Um, so you'll want to kind of do that. And, um, and again, you're going to have to think about the feedback, the history of your organization, working with your leadership group to think about, okay, one, who can you assign it to? Or two, you know, looking at ourselves, what are we going to be able to achieve? Because at the end of the day, you're still students, right? And you still have academics and, and we're in the middle of pandemic. So, you know, you want to take all of those considerations um, into your thinking as well. Awesome. And then next is R, which also has different meanings we came to find. So there's realistic and there's also relevant. So when I look at realistic and relevant, I kind of also combine it with like the why. Um, is this something that aligns with your organization's mission, goals? Um, does it fit with, you know, the trajectory you want to go in? Um, you want to make sure that it's not something that is so far out there that it doesn't really fit with your organization's goals um, that you've currently set or maybe historically that you've set in the past. So kind of make sure it's in tune with, you know, what your organization is about and its mission. Definitely want to look at all of those things for sure. Um, and then one thing to keep in mind is, is this something that's worthwhile? Is this really going to help push our organization forward? Um, what added value is it going to give to our organization as well? Um, and I believe in having purpose and intention behind, you know, the actions that you take or the changes that you implement. Um, I'm really big on how is this going to work in the long run. So you also kind of want to be a little bit futuristic with that um, in terms of how it's going to benefit your organization. And I understand that there's, you know, short-term, long-term goals and whatnot. But I think kind of looking at it um, in, the long, in the long run also is really important. 
um, and how this can, again, push your organization forward. Um, so you can think of this as like, rel is it relevant to your organization um, and realistic too, in terms of like who and what your organization typically is about. And then we'll end with T, which is time-based. Time-based. So when are you trying to accomplish this goal by? Um, and so that would be important because you want to give yourself an end date, um, a, a, a deadline, just so that you know, are you achieving your goals and also to be able to report to others and, and there's a, a, a time to accomplish the goals. Um, is it going to be on a quarterly, is it a quarterly goal? Is it that you're going to have things, you know, odd even weeks or, you know, by elections or things like that. So those are some things that you'll want to consider. But again, this all goes back to everything else where, um, what have you set up for yourself? So for an example could be maybe you're going to recruit five new members who attend meetings and at least one event during fall quarter, right? So it's not just about recruiting the members, but it's about well, what kind of member are you trying to recruit, right? That's the specific piece. Um, and, you know, what do you want them to do and how is it going to be achieved? Is that something you think that you can achieve? And is that realistic for your org? Maybe if you're an org that typically recruits, you know, 50 people, then you would obviously, you know, add that number up a little bit more. But maybe if you're a new organization, you know, you'll think about that number differently. Um, and then fall quarter, you know, just so that you, you give yourselves that time frame versus like the whole academic year. So that's one idea. Uh, like Michael said earlier, you know, think about social media. So maybe some of you all are building on your social media or your Instagram, right? Um, I'll admit, you know, the Soul Office, we had just started that, you know, building it a little bit more last fall. And so, you know, we are continuing to build on it. So maybe you're just also, it wasn't part of your initial kind of organization to begin with and now it's something you're building. So maybe you're building your Instagram to gain at least 50 new active followers by the end of fall quarter. What does an active follower mean? It means, um, that they're liking and commenting on their po your posts and potentially even attending meetings. Um, or maybe building means that you're working on a posting schedule or that you have um, folks constantly brainstorm topics and content to post, right? Um, so again, you wanna be more specific about you know, exactly what, you know, what is an active member or what kind of, what kind of follower you want or what kind of um, recruiter, recruitment member do you want to have? Awesome. So we wanted to take some uh, time to kind of get your perspective and what's been working for you right now um, when it comes to social media. So if you all could take a moment to utilize the chat um, to share what platforms you're currently using um, and maybe what hashtags you've used that have been successful or what hashtag do you think um, would be helpful based on you know, current trends and whatnot. So we'll give everyone maybe about a minute to kind of share that. Um, and this is good for folks Again, like Ashley mentioned, like if you're building your social media presence or you're trying to incorporate additional strategies, um, feel free to take what information is shared. So if folks feel comfortable sharing what social media platforms they're currently using um, or hashtags that they feel might be helpful, please feel free to do so. Don't be shy. Awesome. We're seeing Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Discord. Discord, that's a new one. Seems we're not too sure about hashtags. Music lists, that's pretty cool. I like a playlist, that's cool. Instagram and Facebook seems to be a lot. Mostly okay. Instagram. Awesome. Reaching out to other clubs. That's definitely a good tip. A website. Mm -hmm. Slack. Yep. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing those tips that you all uh, for social media platforms you're using and hashtags. Like I said, feel free to copy and paste or Keep sharing. Um, use that information and keep sharing uh, as you feel necessary. Oops, sorry, these keys are out of control. All right, so when it comes to social media, um, we want to make sure that you're thinking strategically. So, you know, again, putting purpose behind it, um, having intent with your actions. So 
one of the first steps is, you know, when you're creating your own website or if you're looking to put out a newsletter or email listserv um, and utilizing your social media pages, um, definitely look at the purpose behind that. So when we look at the purposes, what, do you, what message are you trying to send across through that specific platform? If it's Instagram, maybe you want to incorporate more like member highlights. If it's Twitter, maybe you want to do more, you know, Q and A's type of thing because Twitter is so quick and it's easy to type. Um, and maybe Facebook, you want to use that for more like event specific um, types of messaging that you're wanting to share with current and prospective members. And also who's your audience on each one? Um, if it's something like Instagram, where, you know, a lot of people mention that that's something they use. And I can imagine that, you know, currently uh, undergraduate professional and graduate students probably have some familiarity with that. So maybe that's like your platform that you use to connect with new members and current members. And, you know, maybe Facebook is something that you, you push your um, current members towards in terms of like RSVPing for events or something like that. Um, and maybe you utilize TikTok too to share like quick bits about your club for folks who are not familiar with your organization. So it's really important to do that because you're putting the intent behind that. And Ashley, feel free to chime in as I kind of go over each of these tips when it comes to thinking strategically. Um, do you want to talk about creating a posting schedule? Because I know you have a lot of experience with that, Ashley. I, I wouldn't say a lot, but um, <laughs> again, you know, once you're trying to organize, uh, organize yourself more, especially if you're going to use multiple platforms, right? You're going to probably brainstorm or, or come up with different content features. And then you'll want to kind of create a posting schedule. And sometimes you'll want to share what is your posting schedule? You know, some groups decided that, you know, Sundays are self-care Sundays. And so they might send out a challenge out to all of their members. And, and so maybe the post is, you know, here are some self-care tips or here are some self-care activities. And then maybe with their members, you know, um, encouraging them to reshare a post, you know, how they engage in that self-care behavior. Right. And, and then maybe Wednesdays is, you know, um, I can't think of a, a, a word right now, but you know, coming up with themes or certain days that you're going to either engage in activity or a, a post a certain kind of post that helps the, the you know follower understand a little bit more about like to anticipate on your social media channels. The thing to think about is you know you're not just putting information out there, but you're trying to really engage them and have a back and forth with them and and having them engage in your content, right? Because um, you know sometimes people might not want to see just event flyers all the time. Um, it's something that you're asking them to do that they're kind of just going to your event or something like that, but having either um, helpful information, like My Michael said earlier too, personalizing it and, and showing really there are human beings behind this organization, um, that they're connecting with another, person, especially now while we're remote, is that they're really connecting with other human beings. Um, so creating a posting schedule, and sometimes I think it's helpful to, sh to explicitly say, say hey, this is our posting schedule for fall quarter. Like Mondays expect this from us, Thursdays expect this, right? Um, I think one of my groups said that they um, have small groups, uh, kind of small group meetings on certain days and then big group meetings um, every X amount of days. So that's kind of information that you'll want to share, you know, with your audience or your members. And then the other thing I was saying uh, is designate a role for somebody to oversee, you know, be the main social media person, but you'll want to maybe assign certain folks to certain platforms. Maybe they're better at them. Maybe they're on those platforms all day. Um, or, you know, sometimes it can be really time consuming. So assigning a day to a, a different people um, because, you know, hopefully you'll get to a point where, you know, you're commenting back and forth with other people. You're, you're having DMs with like people asking you questions, things like that. And it might be a lot to handle. And so we would um, say, suggest that you designate people to be in charge as well as potentially assigning days or assigning platforms to different people. Um, we also know that this is true for, um, you know, the UCLA housing pages, you know, they have a very specific um, look and feel branding for their Facebook versus their Instagram. Um, and they have specific teams for this different area. So you might want to consider that for your social media pages and your website as well. Awesome. And then when you're looking to interact with your specific audience or your target audience, um, definitely consider like Ashley mentioned about platforms maybe you're using now, but also what platforms maybe have a uh, wide array of audiences already present. Um, so I know this is an informal practice, but um, if there's a uh, Facebook group that corresponds with your graduating class or the incoming classes, um, and you're able to share information to 
to those different platforms or Facebook groups about involvement opportunities or you know ways that those specific folks can get involved, definitely utilize those. And I think some folks mentioned um, in some strategies that worked for them that they've utilized other types of Facebook groups too. So um, if it's anything that's UCLA affiliated or that contributes to your org that you feel would uh, contribute to your organization, feel free to look out for those and ask. I don't see any harm in asking. Um, and it's a good way to also, again, spread the message to a wide array of folks. And um, I'm sure you can find um, other types of groups on different platforms. Like I know Instagram, you could utilize the hashtag feature and you can find folks that way too. Um, and, and that's another way to share your message. Um, I'm really big on, um, again, like the personal touch. So if there's people who you feel maybe align with your organization or who may be interested in your organization, um, you know, reach out to them. Um, a DM could be good, or if you give them a follow, um, or you share, you know, hey, I noticed you're an incoming, you know, UCLA student, this is our organization, um, you know, give them a bit of a bit of information for them to kind of uh, take the initiative to learn more about your organization. So again, I think that's just a personal touch that, and we feel that that's something that um, allows you to connect with folks a little bit more personally as well. Um, and feel free to utilize that strategy for other platforms as well, like Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, um, and other social media platforms that are out there. Um, one thing that I believe is helpful when it comes to being personal is uh, connecting with other organizations. Um, I think it's especially great when organizations connect with each other who maybe historically have it in the past. So an organization that maybe you wouldn't traditionally interact with. Um, again, I think that's a good way to share your message to a broader audience or a new audience. Um, and I think it's a good way to build community too and collaborative um, like relationships. Um, and I think it's something that you all can do to um, maybe even um, like apply to like future efforts. Like maybe you all do so, you all are so good about sharing each other's information and communicating with each other. Maybe that can lead to co-programming or, you know, doing a bit together. Um, so be mindful too about um, engaging with their posts too and vice versa. So commenting, sharing, you know, if they're asking a question, if they're doing like a series where on Mondays they post a specific type of question, um, engage with that so that other people can kind of see who you are too. I sometimes tend to click profiles that uh, I've never heard of before simply because of an answer they provided or just something that I felt was unique about them. So utilize that platform as well to do that. Um, and you can al also utilize free analytics to see, um, feel free to chime in on this one, Ashley, I'm kind of drawing a blank, but. Um, um, just to go back real quick to the um, organization thing too, we actually have seen quite a few collaborations happen um, over the summer, um, especially mm -hmm. whether it's um, maybe you share similar goals, service, content related, and you have open houses together. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. And there was a question like, where do you find those orgs? Well, same way that, um, you know, an incoming student or student who's looking to engage, you'll find them on our website, you'll find them in the community um, page. Um, and then I also know that, you know, a CEC and CAC is hosting EAF virtually this year as well. So if you were one of the um, X hundred amount of groups who were able to, they're going to be featured on there as well. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, most UCLA students um, tend to be involved in multiple organizations. And so maybe in the past, you didn't think they were connected. But now if you're part of both groups or three groups or whatever, um, there might be opportunities there um, that you can find connections that you might have not thought of in the past. So um, I think reflect back on yourself and think, oh, what, which groups am I involved with? Um, there might be some collaboration opportunities there. Um, free analytics. So, you know, IG allows you to see your outreach on the time of day that your visitors are looking at your page. So you want to potentially um, use that information to help you. Um, you maybe want to start keeping record of um, you know, your number of followers, that's going to go back to your smart goals, right? And checking in and, and, and seeing have you reached that goal. So utilizing the free analytics, there's, there's tons of resources and websites on, on, you know, goals and stuff like that, but keep some record keeping for yourself because sometimes they're temporary, like they only last that week or two weeks. So that's something that you'll want to think about is what's important to you, you know, the views on your stories or, or the click go back rates, right? What did somebody go back to to look at? Um, was important to them that you shared. So that's going to be some information that you'll you'll want to consider um, as part of your social media strategy. Um, and just to go back uh, one second to the website thing, um, I, I've noticed a lot of my groups are either um, 
for the first time creating their own websites beyond social media pages. And I think someone mentioned in the chat that they're a new org and they're use, they use their website platform to recruit new students. So um, know that there, is a, there actually is typically funding, um, student government funding available to support you in those efforts of website hosting fees and other costs that might be associated with um, some of these media platforms. In the past, student groups have also been able to get advertising money for um, social media boosts and things like that. So there is uh, funding available sometimes for you being remote and utilizing digital platforms, software, and social media. So again, getting into those specifics, I would suggest that you reach out to your advisor um, for those questions and needs. Um, and then going through uh, the USAC president, so this is for undergraduate groups, I think mostly, um, is featuring orgs on their Instagram. Um, and so, um, and so, you know, submit, submit your organization there to be featured with the USAC president. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, we will highlight groups every Friday on our Bruin Leaders Instagram. And we did a, a TBT about how some groups, you know, were able to organize and stay connected during spring quarter. Um, I'll say about the EAF is that it's not launched yet. It will be live. Yeah, Michael said live those dates. So though, that, those are the accounts, but there it's not live yet. I think they will have marketing um, for EAF coming out very soon um, for like students to attend. Cool, thank you, Ashley. And next we're gonna to transition to collaboration. So I mentioned this a little bit in some of the goal setting slides and also some of the uh, like targeted outreach slides as well. But just as a reminder, um, it's always good to try and connect with organizations that you might not have before to build relationships and to also, again, like I mentioned, reach a larger audience or expand your audience that you would normally reach out to. Um, and it's a good way to just continue building relationships because you never know when you might need to lean on each other in the future or if there's something that you're doing that you feel like, oh, this organization would be such a good fit or, um, you know, the information that they have would be an asset to what we're trying to provide our members with or this type of event we're trying to do. So don't be afraid to reach out. I would say everyone's pretty welcoming. And I think especially right now, community is really important. And I think it's important to continue building those relationships and even in this current setting. Um, another strategy is to inquire about recruitment strategies from organizations that have been around for, you know, a few years or that have, you know, put on a certain type of event maybe that you really want to aspire to put on or that you feel like you could take away, you know, different strategies from. So ask around what's worked for different orgs and for different types of um, activities that they do. Um, again, I would like to say that most organizations would like to help out other orgs in terms of sharing their best practices and their strategies um, that have helped them throughout the years or, you know, if they're, you know, they've been around for a year or two throughout the various quarters. So don't be shy to ask and to see what, you know, type of information they can share with you. Um, and again, I think this is kind of, this last strategy is kind of like a good, like, you know, final goal or something that would be really cool um, end goal to see is to co-host an event with another activity or org, especially if you're trying to work on building relationships. Um, or if you already have a good relationship with an org, you know, what's something that you all can do together and bring your members together and also the UCLA community together. Um, also consider working with other departments as well. Um, I have groups who have worked with academic departments to put on um, like symposiums, um, research um, symposiums. So I wouldn't hesitate to ask a department to try and collaborate with you all. Um, I think it's a good way again to kind of expand your networks. Um, so, you know, these are just some strategies to keep in mind when we talk about collaboration and these aren't the only strategies, that's for sure. Um, but these are some ones that we felt like, you know, we'd want to share with you, but, you know, get creative. There's tons of other ways to be collaborative besides the ones that we've mentioned. All right, and, and we're going to go ahead and transition to accessibility. So we're in a new terrain and a, a newer terrain in a newer setting. So there are additional components of accessibility that we need to be mindful of when we're engaging in our recruitment efforts. And so I'm gonna transition it over to Ashley to share about some strategies and things to keep in mind. So some of this might be new for some folks and some of this might be that some of, um, some of these practices you've already incorporated into your organizations. But as we're you know, moving into a more digital area, um, you wanna be mindful about accessibility um, in your organization and the platforms that you're using. So most technology, they will, and companies will have, you know, um, in their 
websites or in their guides um, what their accessibility features are. So you might want to, you know, look into, um, depending on what technology you use, what the accessibility features are. And most of the companies will have those listed. Um, but some kind of things to keep in mind are colors. So you'll see here, you know, depending on the colors and the that you use, whether it's for flyers, your posts, your content, your guides, the documents you use, that um, the color contrast sometimes are not going to work for folks. Um, so there are definitely, um, there, well, I think we'll send it out too, but there are tools that you can use to see, you know, if I put these two colors together, are they going to work for the digital, you know, for my image or my graphic? Um, and so that's something to consider. Um, another thing, especially if you're, you know, using graphics or images more often now in your posts, you'll want to consider alt text. So some platforms, they do have AI generated alt text, um, but they might not be specific enough. Um, and so some folks will sometimes use it. Um, let's say you have a flyer for your, you know, upcoming event. Is the information already in your caption or does the flyer say something else? So you want to describe visually what the flyer looks like, but potentially you have different wording on the flyer that you have in your caption. And so you'll make sure that your alt te text has the text that you're using in your graphic as well. Just so that again, that graphic is accessible for folks like, you know, um, Instagram does have an AI generated, but I think right now it might just say image versus if you had an image of your upcoming event, it's on a specific time on a specific platform uh, has a registration link. Um, you're going to want to put that in the alt text, um, which is a feature on IG. Um, so those are some things to consider as well as like, how is the ease of accessing maybe your website or the platforms that you're using. Um, you know, I have had some of my groups requests um, captioning for their meetings. So again, you want to, you know, put it out there to your membership and say, you know, what are your needs and how can we make, um, whether it's our meetings or our graphics accessible to you, and then, um, you know, working with the tools that you have or your advisor to figure out what kind of tools you can use. Um, you want to maybe even consider having an accessibility coordinator, um, for your organization so that they can look through your documents. Um, maybe it's on a checklist of when you're doing your social media posts that you know you made sure you had alt text, you checked the, the graph, the color contrast and it worked. Um, we're gonna provide you with some um, resources from UCLA. Um, the, if you aren't familiar, Disabilities and Computing Program has you know, some information. Sometimes it's specific to um, academics and things like that, but the tips and practices they give is very, uh, translates into your organization, um, but they do give some good information there. And then we will um, have in the information we send out to you all um, some more information, but just kind of keeping in mind, and again, don't make any assumptions, um, work with your membership to really ask them, you know, what are their needs? But I think there are general best practices that most groups should be following when you're engaging in digital practices. Um, so, uh, there is a question about captioning for meetings. So what, one thing to think about is it depends on what is the need. Um, I have some groups right now looking into Google Meet. Uh, Google Meet does have captions on their software. So unfortunately right now, Zoom, um, the Zoom version that we have does not have the caption software, but um, anybody can use Google Meet and then through your g.ucla account, you have access to Google Meet. We're not yet sure if there are different features that the UCLA account gets versus the free account, but Google Meet does have caption um, software on there. If you find that that doesn't meet the needs of your membership, um, then you can work with your advisor more on, on what kind of options there are. Um, Center for Accessible Education uses a certain kind of company. And so, you know, you could decide that you will hire a captioner, but that means that you'll also have to apply for funding. So you can you work with your um, advisor to figure out what funding options are gonna be available for you. Um, so again, it will go back onto what the needs are and then working with your advisor on how to meet the needs of your organization. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. So we're gonna go ahead and transition to engagement. And again, just a really quick question to pose to our folks in the audience. Um, what communication platforms do you currently use or applications are you currently using to engage with your members? Um, what are some things that you know, have worked well maybe to like maintain connectivity um, or to keep folks kind of um, you know, engaged with what's happening with your organization? So feel free to take a minute to share some of those uh, platforms or applications that you all have used I know in the past, uh, 
past questions someone mentioned, um, you know, utilizing Slack. And so that's a good way to also kind of like create different channels about, you know, different activities that are going on or, you know, different areas of your organization that folks are a part of or whatnot. But feel free to continue throwing in any applications or platforms you use. I'm going to go ahead and transition just for the interest of time. Um, so when you're looking at engagement efforts, I think it's important to be upfront with what, what are you going to do? Like, what is your activity based on? Is it a virtual open house? If we're talking about recruitment, are we, you know, going to use this time to kind of give folks a tour of, of our organization, its members, um, and what we've done, what activities we, we do currently and we've done in the past. Um, so be strategic about, you know, what type of event you're going to, or activity you're going to hold. Is it just solely an information session where, you know, folks can ask questions or where they can, you know, uh, have an opportunity to do a breakout with a current member who can share their experience? Um, or if somebody wants to learn more about like a leadership position, is there an opportunity to learn more about that? Um, or is it just a hangout? Because I understand sometimes, you know, we just want to chat. Um, so maybe it's something that, you know, you all like curate a topic, like, you know, we're going to have this information hangout, um, this hangout about, you know, our favorite Netflix show right now. Um, and then also if you're an organization that requires folks to um, in, do an interview and audition, depending on what type of org you are, just making sure you're communicating that info across so folks can be prepared. Um, no matter what type of activity you choose to hold for your engagement efforts around recruitment, um, just be specific, be thorough so people know what they can expect. Um, I think it would be a bit uh, unfortunate if somebody was expecting to, you know, attend an information session and then they're put in a breakout room and basically uh, asked to provide, like, you know, an interview-based type of response to why they want to be a part of the org. So just be mindful about that so folks know, you know, what they're getting involved with. Um, and also when you're hosting your engagement efforts or activities, just be mindful of security. Um, so are folks receiving a unique link to that specific activity or event? Um, do they need a password? Are you enabling, if we're using Zoom, like a waiting room feature, so you know who's coming in and out um, of your specific activity, just to prevent, you know, any type of Zoom bombings that might occur and just to ensure overall safety. Um, so just, you know, make it fun, but be, be specific about what you're going to be involving your organization members and future organization members with. And then next, we'll go ahead and transition to retention. So you've heard me say this before, I'm all about personal relationships and keeping it personal and creating a sense of like, you know, connectedness um, to the specific effort at hand. So we kind of came up with some strategies that kind of revolve around creating a sense of purpose and belonging. So um, I think right now people really want to feel a part of something and they really want to feel like they're contributing towards something or just, you know, build community in general. So one of the first tips that I'll share is generate future member input or buy-in. So like we mentioned before, how are you giving folks the opportunity to share their ideas, their suggestions to feel like they're contributing to something larger and that they feel like they're a part of your organization. Um, for me, I you know, like hearing my ideas heard, not because I want them implemented, but just so I know that folks are hearing me out and at least taking it into consideration. And as long as I'm given a platform to share, then I, want, I will personally want to keep sharing. So provide opportunities for folks to give feedback for your organization and I think that's one way to not only help your organization grow, but to keep folks coming back. Do you want to share the next one, Ashley? Sorry, I'm, I was um, distracted. Is it family groups? It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so keeping it, you know, really personal, because I think one of the questions you'll see later, somebody asks, well, what about for some of our folks who are maybe more introverted or don't want to meet in mass groups, right? So you want to maybe consider having smaller groups or one-to-one -one, um, opportunities or even mentorship opportunities. Um, uh, one thing I think Samahang shared in their, or one of our spring workshops is that they, you know, paired up everybody and then potentially switched them up the week later. But part of the pairing was that they had, you know, designated questions or they had to like reshare within the organization some cool facts that they learned about the other person. So again, going back to again, who are the members of your organization and, you know, getting that feedback from them about how do they want to connect with each other? Or maybe you're going to have groups of people who want to connect in large group settings and people who are going to want to connect in more one-to-one. -one. So having a couple of options for your membership is going to potentially be key um, in keeping that connectedness and, and making sure that, you know, um, you have a variety of options for your membership. 
Yeah, and I think lastly, um, again, kind of going hand in hand with buy-in is what is something that they can currently be a part of. Um, if it's a leadership position, you know, making sure you're sharing that, or if it's a leadership position, that's great for somebody who is an incoming student, whether they're a freshman or an incoming transfer student, um, kind of being vocal about those involvement opportunities, or if there's an opportunity to shadow, you know, a position that someone might be interested in, again, just giving folks the opportunity to contribute or to learn more about your organization. Um, and again, folks like the idea of being able to contribute to a greater cause or to a specific activity that you're doing. And I think it also gives um, folks a sense of accountability and responsibility in some cases. Um, if you, you know, assign them with a certain task or a certain role, um, or, you know, if you um, provide involvement opportunities, even along the lines of like Ashley mentioned, like, family groups or opportunities for them to check in. I think that's an involvement opportunity that would also keep people coming back as well. So these aren't all the strategies. These are just some, um, and again, these all revolve around creating a sense of purpose and belonging. So we're gonna go ahead and transition to best practices. So for best practices, we've basically kind of just briefly summarized some of the um, things that we presented. But first and foremost, we wanna make sure that with your recruitment efforts and your managing your organization in general, don't do any harm. Um, don't create any situations that might be unsafe or, you know, that might make your current or future members uncomfortable. Um, so be mindful of that and that you're not creating situations where, you know, people could potentially feel unsafe. And you want to make sure that you all are operating responsibly and engaging in responsible activities. Um, so it, just something to be mindful of. And if you're, you know, if you're on the fence about something that you're thinking of doing, talk to your advisor. Um, we'll be honest and upfront with you and we'll let you know if that's something that you should or should not be doing. Um, again, we're all navigating a new setting. So feel free to share your ideas that you have around activities or engagement or recruitment efforts with your advisor so that we're in the know so that we can help you avoid those situations because that's the last thing we want to see. And we wanna make sure again that you all are having fun and that you all are you know, providing opportunities for current and your UCLA students as well. Um, and then also taking security measures seriously. So as you know, during the beginning of the spring quarter, there was lots of incidents with Zoom bombings and access issues. So, you know, kind of hand in hand with creating a safe environment, make sure you're taking those measures seriously and that you're informing members of how, you know, you're approaching your security measures and um, what they can expect. And then also consider all accessibility recommendations as Ashley mentioned. Um, you know, we're in a new setting and there are additional things to be mindful of. We shared some great tips with you about um, providing alt text if you're using photos and also looking at color um, contrast, making sure you're using the correct colors so that it doesn't create um, like a distortion. And with everything that we shared that involves a link, or if it's a website we referenced, we'll share that with you in the follow-up email. Do you want to add anything to the uh, best practices, Ashley? I think we're good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and then one thing I wanted to share with you all really quick, this is something from UCLA Residence Life, specifically program and event management. Um, they've created a really cool website that um, go over different types of platforms and applications and, and use them. Um, so I just wanted to provide that for you all as something to use as a resource. And I will definitely include this in the follow-up email that I'm going to send after our workshop today. So I won't go in depth and for each one, but just know that this is something that we'll send so you all can kind of look at how to effectively use that specific platform. And they've laid it out really nicely. And just to add that, um, kind of being aware of what UCLA has licensing agreements with, right? So mm -hmm. you all know Zoom, as well as G Suite. So some of the applications in Google Drive, you know, you're going to have more features than the free options. And I believe this might be news to some folks, but might not be news to others that UCLA will be entering agreements soon with Slack as well. I'm not sure what the exact features, new features will be Either. because of that maybe more channels or something, but um, just kind of being aware of, you know, that uh, as UCLA students, you do have access to um, some of the ones that they have, UCLA has agreements with. So you might have more yeah, features. When possibly you use video it. chatting. I know that's something that they do right now or that they are capable of doing. But so we're, um, we're almost at the, the three, the three o'clock <laughs> mark. We're almost there. Um, I just, these are some of the questions that were submitted. Um, and I think we kind of hit all of them. Um, one thing I'll say is um, utilize your networks. A lot of people are, have asked um, like how to focus on retention, especially during the early weeks of the quarter. Um, you know, utilize your networks to get those people in and then also be intentional about, you know, what they can expect from your organization. 
Um, definitely focus on branding when we talk about advertising. Um, so we focus on what type of message you want to send. Um, if it's a specific logo or a specific like color set that people see, honestly, those are things that remind me of a specific brand. Um, look at incorporating that into your marketing and branding efforts as well. Um, I would say for retention also, being clear with them, you know, what are some of your, you know, um, actions going to be in the, the first couple of weeks of the quarter? Do you have an event coming up? How often are your meetings? You know, how, like, how passively or actively can I be as a student, right? If I'm just exploring some of the orgs, you know, what, what are those capacities? I know some of you all have, you know, applications and interviews, things like that. So being very clear on, you know, what your goals are for the first couple of weeks or what they should expect from you. Um, if, you, you know, how can they get in touch with you if they have questions, things like that. I think being very transparent um, about what kind of organization are you going to be have to having things on a rolling basis or is everything planned out? Um, so I think that will be important in the first couple of weeks of the quarter. Awesome. And then um, I will provide some like additional um, answers and feedback to these questions that were submitted and I'll include that in our um, follow up email that we'll send either today or tomorrow. I just wanted to end with um, Some strategies that were shared from other RCOs and there was a lot of great resources shared um, within the chat for our various questions. Um, so, you know, some things that have worked for people are utilizing Slack and um, utilizing social media to build campaigns and reaching out to other organizations as well, not just within UCLA. Um, so we'll send you a copy of these, uh, of these slides so that you can also reference the strategies that were shared. Um, we can also but, try to send the chat out too. I'll, I'll block out the names and we yes. can try to send because you all actually submitted really great examples in our chat today as well. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. And again, I apologize that we couldn't go over the submitted questions and strategies in depth, but I will provide you with a uh, resource so that we can provide some additional answers a little bit more in depth for those questions that were submitted. Um, I would also lastly, say, sorry to interrupt you, Michael. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, if we didn't cover it today or if we don't cover it in the follow-up email, you know, again, don't hesitate to schedule a meeting with your advisor and um, ask him those specific questions because you're going to be able to talk more specifically about your organization because, again, all groups are different, you know, your audience is different, um, your partnership collaborations are, are going to be different. So, again, we would highly recommend that you email, be in contact, or set up a meeting with your advisor. Yes, and definitely stay connected with us uh, for Facebook and for Instagram on Bruin Leaders Instagram. And like Ashley mentioned, reach out to your soul advisor. If you don't know who they are, their contact info, you can utilize the link that's provided. Um, if you're a new organization and you want to um, ask a general question, you can utilize the UCLA soul at ucla.edu email. Um, so again, stay connected with us. If you have questions, what I'll say is email me. Um, and then I can, you know, delegate them as necessary or channel them to your advisor if I need to, but feel free to email me questions that you might have post presentation. Um, again, I will send you a link with um, an evaluation form so that we can get your feedback and then I'll also provide the slides in a PDF format and I'll also provide links to any websites that we mentioned. So again, thank you for your time. We appreciate you for connecting with us and for giving us also your time and energy when it comes to recruitment and um, we're all in this together and, you know, reach out to your soul advisor, like Ashley said, if you have any specific questions, any last minute rec uh, remarks from our advising team that's here? I don't think so. No, I just Orlando? want to say, yeah, no, uh, great presentation. Um, I think that uh, we are, you all put a great job together, putting all of these great ideas together based on all students' questions. Um, and as, just to repeat what everyone has been saying here, please check in with your advisor. We are a great resource and we can point you in the direction of resources as well and answer a lot of your questions. So we we'll hope to see a lot of your emails um, and thanks again.